this is a brutal stage. I mean, they don't really come any harder than this, really. You know, it's important for us just to be doing our best at any given time and uh, working hard for the team. I think we've done a really good job of that. You know, and trying to stay, and stay positive, and then try, even through the hard times, you know, just trying to try to enjoy those and just focus on getting getting through the challenge that's in front of you. The New Zealand adventure racing team that is uh, captained by Nathan Fave has been unbelievably successful over the years. They've won back to back to back world championships. That's unprecedented. And something must be special about that group to achieve that, that level of success. I can't sort of deny that I've achieved a lot, you know, in my life so far, you know, especially with sport. Is there anything secretive about, about how we race? I think it's just, well, I consider it to be pretty basic fundamentals of teamwork. When I look back over my event racing career, you know, almost 20 years, I mean, I've learned so many life skills and stuff that I can transfer into everyday life. You know, I've learned a lot about leadership, you know, what's effective, what's not. You know, often I'll think about it quite a lot after a race, you know, what could I have done better as a team captain? What could I have done better as a teammate? You know, they often say that uh, the best way to gain experience is to learn from your mistakes. And certainly for the first part of my career, that was absolutely true. Yeah, most of the time we'd go to an international race and we'd come away disappointed. The most frustrating thing is making mistakes that you've already made before. So you haven't actually learned from, I guess, previous mistakes. For me as a team captain, you know, composure is really important. Um, just being calm and relaxed and not panicking about things. One example would be the world champs in 2015. Chris stood on a stingray. There was a commotion of yelling and screaming and obviously you know, being stung by a stingray, that could be quite, quite a serious, serious issue. For some teams, not all, but for some teams that would probably mark the end of the race. You know, we were just really, we're just kind of like, hey, let's just calm down. Probably 20 minutes later, we had found somewhere to sleep. We had cleaned and dressed um, Chris's wound. And uh, we weren't sure at that point what was going to happen to the race, but that was kind of not a decision we needed to make. Like right now, let's just do the basics, sleep, get a sleep and see what happens. And three hours later or so, I think we slept for about three hours, yeah, we woke up and Chris woke up and go, yeah, my leg feels great. So we got up and carried on. And I guess we've had a number of those things. You know, whether they be navigation mistakes, whether they be equipment failures, whatever it may be, I just think we've become very, very good at minimizing the impact of those things and not wasting energy. I've got my carrot juice here too. You know, I want to drink those. Adventure racing did start in New Zealand in 1989, so as a young teenager I was aware of adventure racing and I knew it was just a matter of time before I would get into it. My sort of competitive sporting background was mountain biking, I was a kayaker, spent a lot of time in the mountains of New Zealand, so I guess I had the skill set. The team that I was in won the first race I did, the Southern Traverse, and that qualified us for the world champs. Winning my first kind of major race just set the tone. Everyone can make good decisions when the going's good. It's when the going's really hard. That's when you'll see Nathan really rise. He can think really fast on his feet. He can be really calm. Nothing very much rattles him. And I think that really helps lead the team into making really good decisions. I've been in teams where either we haven't had a strong leader or the leader we have had hasn't been the best decision maker and that can lead to some really tough situations. That was probably the biggest draw card is that they knew that Nathan was a strong leader that people respect in the team but also that makes really good decisions. Oh, Nathan was great. There's this really good patisserie in Motueka or something called Nut Corners. We really like that. <laughs> At the Adventure Racing World Champs here in New Zealand, on one of the tracking stages, he pulled a nut corner out. He must have saw that way before the race started. He thought, if Marcel has a little bit of a sad moment in this race, that's the thing that I'm going to give him to cheer him up. He is the most experienced adventure racer out there, so he can draw on those experiences to guide the team. He's sensible. You see so many teams get wound up in the competition, but you can't do that in adventure racing. You can't do that for six days. Nathan can always step away and say, let those guys go and do that. You know, we're doing our own thing here, just chill out. He's a wise old man. <laughs> I've always struggled with normality. 
Someone said to me, you're a real normal guy. You know, I'd probably be crushed. And I think the interesting thing is that is enough of a break from normality to kind of just say to myself, yeah, no, I'm not normal. And, uh, and I like that. I think out of all the disciplines, I think, yeah, I'm probably a water person. It's probably the easiest thing for me to go training for just because I'm so passionate about being on the water. Yeah, I live by the sea and, you know, I guess culturally my heritage comes from, from the Pacific Islands. So, yeah, being on the water is, uh, is just a comforting, fun, special place to be. As racing's become less of a focus of my life as I've gotten older and you know, I've been very instrumental in New Zealand in, in creating opportunities for women to adventure race and you know, we have an amazing event in New Zealand called the Spring Challenge where you know, we've had over 10,000 Kiwi women get into adventure racing. My wife and I are very active in youth initiatives and opportunities for kids to have outdoor adventure and adventure racing type sort of experience. You know, I'm just proud you know, of my contribution to the elite, elite level of racing but also in the development of the sport. There's a period in my life where I would go to a race and you know, winning the race was the, the only thing that mattered. You know, that's all I wanted. But I think over the years, you know, your perspective changes and you grow and mature and you realise that there's, there's much more important things in life than racing. Yeah, Nathan and I have been together so long. I think it's been a really wonderful journey where we've really grown together but also being able to really support each other to grow individually really strong. He always has made time for the family. That's been the most important thing. Yeah, adventure racing has been such a big part of my life. It's become such a big part of our family life. And yeah, I've just learned, I guess, over the years to, to juggle. We spend a lot of time with the kids in the wilderness. They share, you know, my training with me and I just sort of work around that. And I think I gain strength from that balance as well, knowing that I'm here as an individual, but you know, I'm here sort of as our family as well. He's incredibly calm and supportive, a really good encourager. And I think he just has time to talk. He has time for them. When you're on adventures, you don't have to be juggling work and things so you can be really present and have quality time with connecting with the kids. When we go on family adventures we normally go up the mountains or like down rivers, pack rafting, just spending time with the family and challenging each other and working together. I think our lives are very comfortable in Western society. You know, we have access to an amazing range of food, entertainment, technology. But I find I'm a much better person if I make the time to be deprived of those things. It can just make me more grateful for what I have.